Good day everyone, wherever you are. Thanks to our moderator, Sarah Ruxted, for the kind introduction. I want to make a public comment on the need for a continued GADU for research on bio-relevant and bio-predictive in vitro release methodologies for long-acting inhalation and other complex generic drug products. This topic surfaced after consultation with many colleagues from generic industry, AAPS communities, as well as the PKPD software vendors. Let me start with the disclaimer. The opinions expressed herein are solely those of my and do not represent the statements or opinions specific to my employer Sandoz or Novartis or other members of the AAM trade organization. My sincere thanks to all the colleagues who helped me put this comment together, mainly the Sandoz Clinical Development and also at the staff at the Association for Accessible Medicines and also FDA Generic Drug Science and Research staff who provided me guidance during this process. I will briefly describe the role of bio-relevant and bio-predictive in vitro methods in generic drug development. I will identify the areas of need for further development that my colleagues have come up with. We have achieved significant progress in the last five years in developing mechanistic modeling tools that predict the in vivo BE performance. However, model input requires precise bioprelevant, bioprediction in vitro data to assess differences in formulations. Lack of bioprediction methods to generate such data is limiting the utility of mechanistic modeling for product development and regulatory assessment. Individual generic companies do not have the capacity to develop the in vitro tools from scratch for each technology platform. So there is a need to develop basic in vitro methodology for complex technology platform products. And there will be a huge positive impact of FDA GADU for research in developing in vitro methods to predict in vivo outcomes on acceleration of generic drug development while reducing the clinical cost. The need for bioequivalent in vitro method development, we identified three areas to focus. For long-acting injectables, the challenge we face is the short duration of the test that leads to poor prediction of long in vivo drug release. The opportunity is to develop methods, both bio-relevant and appropriate for QC, that provides useful input data for mechanistic modeling. In ophthalmic area, our challenge is to develop an in vitro method that is physiologically relevant, discriminatory, immunable for validation, interlab transferable, and robust. In the inhalation product area, we see that products show similarity with the data generated using next generation impactor, but not reflecting the bioequivalent studies. Also, it will be useful to develop methods that predict in vivo absorption from different regions of lung. Our request to the FDA is to continue GADU for research on developing the bio-relevant, bio-predictive in vitro methods. The methods of focus for research in our view are the dissolution methods that predict the in vivo performance of long-reacting injectables with one to six month duration for dosing schedule. The second, the methods that use smaller dissolution media volumes and commercial equipment. Methods have to be product and technology specific, suitable for long acting injectables, ophthalmics with acceptable variability. The third is to develop methods that predict the in vivo performance of the DPI and MDI products in the inhalation area. And in addition, we request the OGD to continue to publish the outcomes of their research in scientific journals, post them on the FDA website, and share at the FDA research meeting such as this. We highly appreciate the OGD for providing us with this opportunity to speak up, and we hope that our recommendations will be considered and implemented as resources permit in the next five years. Thank you.